Hi everyone, I'm José Valim, and today is the fourth day of Livebook's launch week. On the first day, we learned how we can use Livebook to deploy applications, and on the second day, we learned that there are new neural network tasks in Livebook, such as the Whisper model for our speech-to-text, and we also learned how we can deploy machine learning models in a concurrent and distributed fashion. So today we are going to build on top of those days. Uh, don't, don't worry if you haven't seen them yet, we are going to recap everything, but we are going to build on top of those days to build a whisper chat, a chat app where the only way you can communicate is by sending audio messages that are going to be converted to text by whisper. And then we are going to get this uh, notebook and deploy to Hugging Face so anyone can give it a try. So let's get started. All right, so I have Livebook running on my machine. I'm going to create a new notebook. I'm going to call it Whisper Chat. And in order to give us a head start, I'm going to use a smart cell. So I will start the runtime. And now I want to say I want to have a neural network task. And it's going to ask if we want to install the dependencies. We want to do that. And after it installs the dependencies, it's going to run this smart cell. And the, what a smart cell does is that it encapsulates a bunch of different workflows. And uh, on the neural network uh, smart cell, we have a bunch of different tasks. The one we want to use today is speech to text, so let's select that. And after we evaluate the smart cell, it's going to set up like a, a sample form for us where we can submit the audio, run it, and get some text back. So let's give it a try. Hello darkness, my old friend. So. Let's run this, and if it doesn't struggle with my accent, we are going to get a pretty good answer. That sounds great. All right, so now that we have a sample working here, what we can do with smart cells is that we can actually see the code because a smart cell is nothing more than a UI for writing code for us. So we can actually see how this works. So uh, we can see that you know it's setting up the model, the first part here, and then it's setting up a form, and then we listen to the form events, call the machine learning model, right? So we can see how everything works and we can actually convert this to code cells, right? And so we can see it's split in two parts, one where we load the model, load the parameters from Hugging Face, and the other one where I set up the form and execute the events. So what I'm going to do, this is a pretty good starting point for us, right? Because uh, if you think about a chat app, it's going to be a frame where we can render messages and it's going to be a form where we submit the audio and the name. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to clear up some stuff that we are, I know we're not going to use and so we wire everything together ourselves. So we have an audio input and I'm going to add a name input because uh, we want to know who is submitting a particular audio. So let's say we have a name and we want to add that to the form as well. So we're going to say name is going to be the name input. And that's it. Now we, we, we have name and audio as inputs to our form. And every time somebody submits the form, what I want to do is that I want to also match on the name event. And if we have an audio and the name is different to an empty string, we are going to get the audio data and run the machine learning model. And after we get the generated text, what I want to do is that we want to append some content to the frame, right? So the content that we're going to append is going to be some markdown content. And um, we want to say, let's put the name in bold using markdown and then the generated, generated text. So this is pretty good. And now we are going to do Kino frame append the frame and the content. So this is it. This is pretty much uh, the, the basic structure of our app. So let's execute the cell. And we can see that, yeah, we have the name here. Let's say Joe, hello, Robert. Let's send our first message and it works. And, and this is a really great starting point, but I can see a couple improvements we can do here. So for example, uh, let's change submit to send. I think it's going to be better. Also, I want to make sure that the frame comes before the form. That feels more natural for a chat app. And I also want to do that if you don't have an audio or a frame, instead of like not doing anything and not giving any feedback, we want to say, look, uh, error, um, oops, 
name and audio are required. And what well, and but instead of appending this to everybody, right? Because it's a chat app, the frame is shared with everybody, as we are going to see soon. We want to send this message only to the person who submitted the event. So we got the origin here, and we do to origin. And now if we give it a try on this slightly improved app, so we have let's submit it. We can see now that the frame is on the top. This is pretty good. If I delete the name, it shows the error message. Oops, is missing an asterisk here, but that's pretty good. So we have like a quite functional whisper chat already, but that's not all, we can improve this, right? So on the second day, we talked how um, when we define the serving and we execute it directly here, it's literally executing the serve directly. So if there are like, um, 10 people or eight people trying to submit the form at the same time is going to run one right after the other. And this is not ideal because uh, machine learning models and GPUs, they are really good at doing things in batch. So we want to batch things together, right? So if there are eight requests, we want to batch all eight and then convert all eight uh, from speech to text at once. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to make, let's say we're going to make this notebook scalable now. We're going to add some concurrency to it, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is async listen. By default, listen executes one event right after the other, but by adding async, now they're going to run concurrently. And now they're running concurrently, we want to make sure that our serving is running concurrently as well and can batch requests. And this is really easy. We're going to say Kino start child, and we are going to start a next serving process. And this is a, at Erlang Virtual Machine process is very cheap, very lightweight. We can create hundreds of thousands of those. So this process is going to be running an X serving, and we are going to pass uh, the serving that we want to run, and we are going to give it a name, which I'm going to call uh, Whisper Chat. And we are also going to increase the batch size, right? Uh, we can also configure the batch timeout as well. Uh, but we're going to say, look, we want to ideally have batches of eight. So if we have eight, we execute it immediately. If we don't have eight and a timeout of 200 milliseconds has passed, then, uh, then we execute with whatever size we have in our batch. All right, so we did those changes, batch size, we are starting the serving, and now all we need to do is that we come back here and say that we want to have a batched run, and instead of passing the serving, we pass the name of our serving process, whisper, whisper chat. And this is it, right? We've like those four changes, batched run, async listen, starting the process, and batch size we've made it concurrent, right? Now we can, uh, let's execute the cell, let's give it a try, but we are going to see that now we have a concurrent uh, chat app. So let's do this, let's make sure that everything works. And that's pretty good, everything's still working and now it's much more scalable. We can leverage concurrency from our machines and batching as well. So pretty nice, pretty good, we are, uh, almost done here. The last thing that we need to do to make sure that it really works, that it's an actual chat app, is that we are going to deploy it and have uh, and try it out from another tab as well. So we click the deploy icon here, and I'm going to say the the, the slug is uh, whisper chat. We don't need password protection, and let's show the source. So if somebody wants to download the source, they'll be able to do so. And now we can deploy. After it deploys, we can open it up and then I'm going to open it up on this other tab as well. So that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do here is that this one is going to be, let's give it a try. This one's going to be Joe, hello, Robert. And let's send it. And this one is going to be Robert. And Robert is going to say, hello, Joe, and submit it. And there you go. You can, so you feel like there's increased latency now, right? Which makes sense because it's the batch timeout, but you can configure to whatever you think is best. And uh, we, can, we can try deleting the name and we see the, the error messages appear just here. And that's it. We've created a, a whisper chat and in what? Uh, 14 plus 23, pretty much 40 lines of code. This is pretty, pretty good. Right, that we're missing just one thing that we promised, right? Now we want to go and we want to deploy this to Hugging Face. So the first step to deploy to Hugging Face, like I'm going to save this to disk, okay? So let's save this. So 
I have a directory here where I put all of my notebooks. So uh, I'm going to save on top of this file. All right, my notebook saved. So now I can go to Hugging Face and I'm here on Hugging Face and I want to say I want to create a new space. So I'm going to create a new space. I want to, let's call it a uh, live book and I'm going to use the Docker one and choose live book, choose the live book template. And this is going to create in space, a space using the live book template. And what I'm going to do is that in order for you to deploy uh, a notebook on Hugging Face is that you go to our space that you just started and you can see here that we have a public apps folder. So you enter the public apps folder. We already have a sample notebook here that you can try it out. But I'm going to say, look, I want to add a file. And so we're going to upload a file and I'm going to choose our chat app. And yeah, we're going to commit that. And by committing the file, it's going to build again. And when you come back to the home page, once deployment completes, you wait a second until all the notebooks, they are deployed, they start. And we are going to see that Whisper will be running, our Whisper chat will be ready for us. So I'll be right back. All right, so a couple minutes later, the app has been deployed. I'm going to close the logs. I'm going to refresh the page. And you can see now that it's saying, look, here is live book. If you want to do authentication, you have to do the setup. But we have some public apps that we can try out. So I'm going to come to our Whisper chat. Again, Joe. Hello, Mike. Let's see if that works. And I'm going to get that here, come to the other tab, join the app as well. And let's be Mike this time around and say, hello, Joe. And there you go, hopefully. Yes. It works. So you can see now that one of the things for is like, we are running like machine learning models, right? And now the latency is much higher because um, the default machine that we are running on Hugging Face, although like quite good, it's not as fast as my local machine. But the cool thing about Hugging Face, right? Is that we can come here to settings and we can say, hey, I actually want to run on a beefer machine. We can do that but we can run the GPU as well. So let's, you know, I'm going to show how to configure that. So I'm going to click here and say, look, I want to use a T4 small GPU. And all you need to do, right, for a live book to, to, to use your GPU is that we're going to add uh, two secrets, okay? So one is not related to the GPU, but since we are here, we add the live book password and you're going to add at least 12 characters. You know, you can like, uh, add whatever here so as your password and then what we are going to do is that we're going to add another secret called exla target and we are going to say that the secret is CUDA 118 and now because we have the secret here and we are running the GPU now you're going to have a machine uh, your notebook uh, the Alexa code is automatically going to figure out that is GPU enabled and when Whisper Chat runs, it's going to be much faster now because it's going to be uh, running on T4. So that's it. That's what I wanted to show for today. I'm not going to make you wait for the deployment. After you watch this video, you can come to my space on Hugging Face, Joseph Alim slash Livebook. The Whisper Chat is going to be there for people to try it out. Be nice, right? And I hope you enjoyed uh, today. And tomorrow is going to be our last day and we are going to talk about data exploration. So I hope I see you tomorrow. Have a good one.